Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day and this footage is actually going to pick up exactly where the previous episode left off. If you haven't seen the ending of the previous episode, you might not quite be sure what's going on here. Basically, I recorded a really long recording session and decided to split it into two separate episodes. So what you're going to see now is the continuation from after I found a village which has a really great mending villager in and decided to set up a nether portal out there. I was on my way to find a desert, so I figured I might as well continue on to find that desert and maybe set up another portal there as well, and that is where our journey for this episode begins. So we're going to pick up right after we left off in the last episode. Hope you guys enjoy. Perfect, we've found one right here in the open and it's probably a good idea to start covering up this lava lake before it burns down any of the neighboring trees because <laughs> we don't have the fire spread turned off in this world and chances are having some lava open like this would start a forest fire. Forest fires aren't nearly as dangerous as they used to be in Minecraft. They used to be able to burn basically the entire place down very fast, but as it goes it's still a good idea to cover up any lava lakes that you happen to find if you don't want to start some large-scale fires around here. And I'm actually going to grab more obsidian than I need for just the village portal while I'm here because I think we're still on the route to a desert. And if it's this far out, considering that we're already 1700 blocks away from zero, if we can find a desert out here and build a nether portal there, it's going to be a very useful connection to have. From what I saw of the map of this place on Mine Atlas, I didn't look too closely because I wasn't looking for it at the time, but I don't think there are any other deserts which are closer, which means if we need to travel 2,000 blocks or so to get to a desert every time, a nether portal connection will reduce that to a matter of a few hundred blocks instead of a couple of thousand, which is going to be a lot faster to travel. So I think it's probably going to be worth grabbing enough obsidian to make another nether portal here, and we can make the connections we need back in our nether hub, and that way we can go back to the desert at any time we need to collect more sand. I think that might be the start of a desert on the horizon over there. Those seem like some incredibly sandy mountains. Oh, there's another shipwreck over there as well. Fantastic, we should check that out before we go any further. But yeah, I'm hoping that over there is the start of a desert. If not, we at least have some very plunderable beaches over here and a large sandbar there that we could probably take care of. Now, let me hop down from this tree because I don't think I can jump to the ocean from here. Here's another fun uh, tip for you, actually. If you've got a bucket of water and some quick reflexes, it is still possible to jump off of here and place down a water source before you hit the ground. Now, you have to be very quick on the right click, and I don't think you can just hold down right click to do that, although it, I could be wrong. Some people might do it that way. But I've actually managed to, <laughs> to hone my reflexes enough and get used to the timing enough that I can sometimes place a bucket of water under me before I hit the ground. That's not reliable, though. Don't rely on that in situations where the full damage could kill you. I highly recommend not dying. <laughs> That's usually a good strategy in this game. A little bit of extra iron, a few emeralds. Those are good, actually. We can trade with those if we go back to that village in this episode. Let's grab the rest of this as well, and chances are there will be another couple of loot chests still hidden in the lower levels of this shipwreck. So let's see if we can dig down. There we go, we found another one. This is going to generate a map for us. There it is. And we even have a few books, a clock, and some paper that we could trade as well. Fantastic. This is all very, very good. In fact, if it means more emeralds we can trade with that villager, I'm quite tempted to go looking for this buried treasure now. I'm sorry this episode has had so many tangents in it. I, I have no idea what coherent lessons you guys can draw from this episode, but sometimes, maybe the lesson is, in this case, you just gotta go and explore. You just gotta go and find the cool stuff that is hiding out there in your world. And you've also gotta find enough spruce wood to make a boat, in this case. So let's make ourselves a spruce vessel and grab that and be on our way. Now, which direction should we go? That is looking like a southwesterly direction, which is good because that's the direction I was headed in any case. And oh, it looks like there might be some ruins over there. Oh, so much to explore. This is the wonder of Minecraft, folks. There is a whole lot of stuff to encounter. And yes, it looks like we have got lucky and finally found that desert I was looking for. So how about we take a quick detour over here, as long as we're not loading in a section of the map right now. And let's take the coordinates of this desert so we can come back. There's a desert temple over there as well. 
well, oh gosh, I'm, I'm so torn. There are so many cool things to explore. And there is yet another shipwreck down there, although the treasure map inside that one is probably going to lead directly to the same place that this treasure map is because it looks like it is only a few blocks away in this direction. It looks like our buried treasure should be somewhere around here. So let's do a little bit of quick digging and I think more or less in a straight line along here, we should run into the treasure somewhere. And this is the great advantage of having aqua affinity and respiration on my helmet now is that I can stay underwater for long periods of time digging at the normal speed, the speed that I would be able to dig on land, and we can gather up a whole bunch of sand. You know what, this might be the sand we need to complete the concrete for our spider spawner too, so I really don't mind digging up all the sandbar here. Although, let's hop out onto land. There's an acacia biome over there as well. This has been a fantastic trip. I'm finding so much good stuff, but now, yeah, let's, let's see if we can find this first. We should also raid the other shipwrecks that I can see in this area because chances are they will have some more emeralds in too. There's our chest. Oh good, there are some more emeralds in here. There's also another heart of the sea. We haven't even done anything with the first one yet, but that is worth having. I think I might leave the cod in there. I will take the prismarine crystals though. Oh, there's so much stuff that I need to take with me right now. You know what? I've got a shulker box. What am I doing? I have a shulker box. I can easily bring this stuff with me. I would forget my own head if it wasn't screwed on, folks. There we go. <laughs> Let's drop the sand in here as well because that's really what we came here for. And the prismarine crystals and stuff can go in here as well. Good, good. I think that will do for now. Let's do a quick check of the other shipwrecks I can see around here just to see if we can grab some more emeralds. Just iron and gold in this one. Let's dig down to the captain's cabin and see if there's anything down there. Another buried treasure map, which will... Yep, that's leading straight back to the place we just were. Not to worry. I guess we'll get rid of this and take everything else with us. And let's hop down in here and see what we've got in this chest. Oh, okay, this one's just got a bunch of crops and stuff in it. Not bad, though. I'll take those. May as well bring the gunpowder with us as well. The poisonous potatoes, not so much. And I think that is actually all for that shipwreck. Well, <laughs> not, not bad. Not bad at all. I think we did pretty well out of those little shipwrecks. Now let's step foot on land and try and get ourselves a flint and steel together so we can make a nether portal here. And the place I am going to head for straight away is right over here. That right there is a desert temple. And there are a bunch of different temples that can generate around the world. There are jungle, desert, and ocean temples, among other structures that it's possible to find. I don't know why I'm still holding this map. I need to put this map away. So desert temples are a really great source of early game loot. They will have a few valuable items in here, but they also have traps that it is necessary to avoid. So we need to approach this very, very carefully. Now, I will probably build my nether portal here. <laughs> I might build it inside the desert temple, actually. That's a really gr great place to have a nether portal. But we will need to make sure that we light the place up adequately because there are lots of dark spots in this place for monsters to spawn. Now, there are a few places that you can get into a desert temple. The front side is this bit here, and there's a, an entrance down there at ground level. These two pillars don't contain anything particular, but they do have an entrance that you can get into on either side. Chances are you will find one of these temples buried in the sand, so you, you can just see one side of it sticking up like this, or maybe the tip of the pyramid. But we can come in here and place a few torches and look down into the central chamber down here, which is where we want to be for the rest of this. Now, this pattern on the floor contains a secret, believe it or not, because there is actually a treasure chamber buried underneath this. Now, the key here is not to dig straight through the center because I'm going to dig that out. And if you look down there, there is a stone pressure plate. Now, stone pressure plates will not be affected by items dropping onto them. So you don't have to worry too much about dropping the terracotta onto the pressure plate. But you do need to be very, very careful not to drop yourself down there. And I will show you why in just a second. So what we're going to do is dig down one of the sides of the treasure chamber here. And the first thing I want to do when I'm down here is take out that pressure plate. Because as you will see, underneath this is not one, not two, but nine blocks of TNT. And if you step on that pressure plate, all of this TNT is going to explode and take all of the treasure with it. So that's something to be aware of, folks. That is something you need to be very, very careful about. Let's put some more of the stuff we've gathered here, including our new little cache of TNT in here. And let's explore what else is here in the treasure chamber, because I'm sure there are going to be some great things here in these loot chests. So we've got the bones of some long dead 
pharaoh or other, even some iron horse armor. Looks like he was buried with his horse. A little bit of sand and string that you can take with you. Nothing too special in there. A luck of the sea enchanted book. That's not the best thing in the world to get, but I'll take it anyway. We may as well take the rest of this stuff. Some diamond horse armor, which is kind of fun and a saddle and a few other pieces of loot as well. So horse armor of all different varieties is apparently what we're going to get from here, which is not the best loot in the world. Sometimes you get things like diamonds and emeralds. Occasionally you'll get some really good enchanted books. That luck of the sea one was a bit of a bad pull, I think. That's that's a shame, but not to worry. We'll take it with us anyway. I brought this shulker box with me so that we could gather enough sand, but it is fast filling up with all of this other stuff we've been getting. Well, not to worry. I think that'll be fine, and there's nothing really else to explore here in this desert temple, but I thought I may as well do that in this episode because it's worth <laughs> it's worth looting a few of these places just to see if they have any valuable resources or anything you can trade later on. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, this desert temple is going to be a good place to install a nether portal. So I've made a nice wide portal here. <laughs> it's kind of a three by three portal because this is a an odd numbered room and it kind of matches up with the entrance over there. That's a three by three. I need some flint and steel now. And the problem is I don't have any gravel on me. Oh, I do some, have some gravel on me. Okay, good. Let's see if we can grind a piece of flint out of this gravel. We did it. Fantastic. And I should have plenty of iron ingots I can use in here to make the steel part of the flint and steel and we'll be able to light this nether portal, take the coordinates and match it up somewhere in the nether. That's probably going to be quite far away from any of the other portals though, so chances are we'll have to open a new portal for that, and I'll do that manually in the nether later on. While I'm here I might just quickly take a nap because it looks like night is falling, and then we can get out and probably explore this desert. So as you can see, deserts are mainly comprised of sand, and underneath the sand if you dig down far enough you'll find a layer of naturally generated sandstone, which can also be a really great resource and is a fun building block if you want to build anything with sandstone. So the majority of the stuff I'm going to be doing here is digging sand so that I can use sand to make concrete and glass and all of the other stuff you use to make sand, but it's going to be good to come back here and gather a few other resources. While we're here, we can also pick up some cactus, which behaves pretty much as you would expect cactus to. If you walk into it, you start to take prickling damage, which is not very fast, but can still damage you quite a bit. And if you break cactus, it breaks just like any of the other three block tall plants do. You can just break it from the bottom and the entire thing will break. One thing to be aware of is that cactus can also destroy items. I'll do this with some jungle planks because I don't need to worry too much about these right now. If you throw something against a cactus, the item will actually be permanently destroyed. So that's something to bear in mind. Don't drop any of your items near a cactus because there is a chance they will be permanently destroyed. You don't want to drop any of your diamond tools or your elytra or anything valuable next to them because you're not getting that back. So with that taken care of, I think the last thing for us to do is head back over to the village. We're not going to worry too much about gathering sand now that I've filled up my inventory and my shulker box with other things, because now we have a nether portal connection, we can come back here much quicker and gather sand anytime we want to. And on my way back, I've encountered yet another village, and this guy has the other treasure enchantment that we can't get through the enchantment table. He has Frost Walker. So this is another guy I really want to preserve. This is actually incredible. We're having such great luck with villagers. Now let's make sure it's safe for him to get down there. It looks like it is, very good. If you would just step slightly to your left there, sir, that would be fantastic, if you don't mind. Fine, I'll block you in this way. <laughs> we'll pop a torch in there. We'll drop a wood block over the top of him so it's really obvious where he is. Light the area up like so, and maybe even drop a grass path down there so that we can still chat to him. Good, he's actually got quite a nice paper trade as well. That's not terrible. So yeah, there are a few things we could do in this village while we're here. Take a look around. See if any other good librarians are here. Luck of the Sea 3, that's a lot better than the book I just got from the Desert Temple. 25 paper trade as well. Some good paper trades today. There's a fisherman here we can trade our string with. 16 string for an emerald is really not a bad trade. Lots of brown coat villagers here as well. And a farmer, fantastic, great. Oh, two farmers in a row, amazing. You guys need preserving as well, I think. And I'll take the coordinates of this village because it's probably fairly close to the other one I found. There we go, got a little uh, little farmer box here. <laughs> we will come back for these guys later, but they need preserving. The farmers are really, really useful because guess what? You can grow crops pretty much anywhere. And 
in large numbers, so they're really good for trading with. Man, it seems like after I complained about too many cartographers earlier, Minecraft decided to pull out all the stops when it came to these villages. This has been fantastic. So let's get back to the village where that mending guy was so we can wrap up today's episode. Here he is, my golden child. <laughs> my, my friend, my very, very good friend. Let's grab a couple of books out of here. We've got 13 emeralds. We can trade one of those and a book for a mending book. Oh my goodness. We have ourselves a source of mending books now. I am so excited for this. And he's probably got a couple of other really great trades that we can unlock further down the line. One can hope. Oh yes, I'm so excited that we have a mending book trading villager now. So we definitely need to set up a nether portal here, either to visit this guy on the regular or bring him back with us to the base. I can't decide which I should do at this point in time, but not to worry. I'm going to set up a nether portal right here, I think, right on the edge of this village. Seems like a good place to do it. And I'm going to make an extra wide nether portal as well because I saved some obsidian building that one at the desert temple. There we go. Looking good. I think that's going to be a great connection to have. Let's take the coordinates of that and we will figure out the nether side connections for these off camera. You guys know the maths at this point. Just divide the coordinates from the overworld by eight and you should get the position of the portal you need to place in the nether. I'm gonna go straight back and <laughs> apply that mending book to my elytra, I think. <laughs> and guess where that nether portal connection came out? Here. <laughs> <laughs> on the edge of this nether fortress, a completely different nether fortress to the one we had already explored, which I think is somewhere over there. But this is the one I saw in the distance, completely surrounded by a lava lake. Eventually, we might turn this one into a wither skeleton farm, because look at this. I can already see four of them from just where I'm standing, which is a little bit precarious. I should get down from this. But yeah, we had to kind of bridge out over a lava lake in order to match up that portal to its location. This tunnel leads back to the nether hub, sort of. <laughs> it's, it's a tunnel through some solid netherrack. I've made a couple of bridges here and there and then when we get to this point it becomes a little bit more freeform but at least I'll be able to show you exactly where in the nether we are. Yes that over there is our original nether fortress and all we need to do is hop down the side of this little cliff over here and you might start to recognize this as it comes into view. Now I just need to make sure I'm not going to leap into any ravines or anything like that. Sprint jumping around the nether is not always advisable but up there you can see is our little castle styled nether hub section and this is the the area that we've come to occasionally here and there when we've been when we tested out the bed explosion I think it was around there so yes this is this is actually a really good location it's really not that far in the nether to that village because it's only you know a thousand maybe 1500 blocks away in the overworld so not that far removed and the nether makes the distance almost trivial so having done a little bit more trading off camera I have got myself four men books. I basically came back here, took all the emeralds I had, and when we have completed that, uh, that nether fortress connection over there, I decided I should probably get myself as many mending books as I can right there and right now. So we have a mending book we can apply to our elytra, which is going to be the most important thing for repairing the durability of our elytra. We can also apply that to our silk touch pickaxe and maybe a couple of the items of armor which are looking the worst for wear. Those boots especially I think need it and probably the helmet as well. The other two are kind of replaceable right now, but the boots and the helmet are I'll pretty much set up the way I want them, give or take maybe protection for on the helmet. So I'm hoping we can do that. I'm hoping I've left myself enough levels. Likewise, my sword could maybe do with mending as well, because that's a really good setup right now. Basically, it's up to you to decide which is going to have priority. Now, one thing I really wanted to do is get an unbreaking book as well. And I don't know if I will be able to get one of those from the enchantment table right now. I can get unbreaking too, which is almost good enough as far as I'm concerned. So I might try that. That will only spend two levels. We'll still have level 30 after that. And so I can see if we get a better in unbreaking. We get unbreaking one on the next level along, you see? So potentially we could put together an unbreaking three book and add that to our elytra as well. And then we would really be cooking with gas. Alternatively, at this point, we could enchant a bunch of other items to see if we get an unbreaking three enchantment popping up on the table later on. But no, that's a good start at least. What I might do is put the unbreaking one book in the chest here, add the unbreaking two and the mending books together, and then apply the whole thing to 
the elytra and then maybe we can just upgrade from unbreaking two to unbreaking three later on so to start off with we'll combine mending and unbreaking two i think we'll put them that way around for no reason other than i like the order of them and then we'll put mending and unbreaking two on the elytra like so now anytime we collect experience if we're wearing the elytra or holding it in our hands we will be able to mend it with the experience and get ourselves a little bit of that durability back which is going to unlock the ability to use our elytra basically all the time instead of having to keep it in a box and wait for it to be repaired having unbreaking on it means we'll be able to fly around for a lot longer and that mending capability is so so valuable as a quick example here, let's breed up some cows because we always get experience from breeding these animals as well. So it's worth doing a little bit of that. We might kill a couple more to get some more food. And you'll notice that the elytra dips in my left hand. That is a sign that it is being mended up. And pretty soon we'll be able to check out the durability on that and see how far it has got. Let me quickly run in here so I can grab the experience. There we go, getting a little bit more. You can actually see the bar going up if you're looking at this in a high enough resolution. Looks like that's all we're getting for now. I'm gonna kill a couple of these cows to get a quick bit of extra experience, maybe a little bit of extra steak as well. And we'll even be able to get a little bit of experience from collecting the steak from here once it's cooked. Now there's one other thing I can actually do to get some more experience really fast, and that is fortune some of this redstone ore. I did want to keep a little bit of that for other uses, so let's maybe take 32 of that and I believe I had some quartz ore from the nether here as well that should be able to top off our mending on the uh, elytra pretty much perfectly let's also apply mending to my silk touch pickaxe so we can mend that as well that's only going to cost us three levels now here's another thing we can do for fun we can actually give these a name and I don't know what I want to name my silk touch pickaxe let me think I think I'm going to go with smooth operator because we always end up getting smooth stone from this thing there we go <laughs> that costs you an extra level if you want to rename an item but a lot of the time it is fun to customize and personalize those tools now obviously we won't be able to break any of the ore blocks with the silk touch pickaxe so i'm gonna have to hold that in my hand while i fortune this the same way i'm doing with the elytra but i think we'll come over to the uh the top of the hill here where we fortuned all of the diamond ore before and let's see if we can repair both the elytra and the silk touch pickaxe with these batch of ore. I'm using my silk touch pickaxe for this so we should probably get a decent amount of the materials from each of these blocks but look at that the elytra is nearly fully repaired already. Quartz ore is seriously the best for doing this kind of thing and we're almost fully topped up now just a couple more blocks should do it. There we go our elytra is fully repaired just like that. Now let's swap the silk touch pickaxe into the offhand we won't use it if it's in the offhand so we can still fortune this but hopefully that should gain a little bit more durability back as well right now it's at 991 let's see where it's at when we fortune all of this redstone okay that's all the redstone fortuned we have 1175 durability back on the pickaxe amazing stuff we could also add mending to a fortune pickaxe if we combine that with uh with efficiency and unbreaking as well that'd be super valuable and with a fortune pickaxe that's you're basically guaranteed for that to never run out of durability because with fortune you're always getting experience for the stuff that you're mining unless you're mining stone with it by mistake or something like that so that's fantastic i think i can be really really happy with that so good that we have a mending trading villager now it's going to unlock so much more of the game to us now that i don't have to worry too much about my tools breaking we're going to need to turn those blaze spawners into a proper experience farm one of these days but that's going to be quite an advanced project so i'm going to save that for a future episode and maybe work on other ways of getting experience in the meantime but i think that's going to do it for today folks this has been a mammoth episode so i hope you guys enjoyed everything thank you so much for watching the minecraft survival guide my name has been pixel riffs don't forget to leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it subscribe if you want to see more and i'll see you guys soon bye for now